All right. So, what we're going to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, is substitution. So, so far, what we did was we solved a system by graphing. If you guys remember solving a system by graphing, we took a graph and we found out where they intersected. And that point of intersection is where, if remember we talked about last class, that point of intersection is, is um, the values that made both equations true. Do you guys remember we took those intersection points and we plugged them into our equations? And that made our equation true. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the solution of a system of equations. Remember, a system is any, anytime you have two or more equations. Um, we're going to find, that, find the solution by substitution. So the first thing I'd like you guys to look at is how, we, how have we used substitution before in this class? Let's say we write in the formula y equals 2x minus 1. To graph this, what did we, um, we always wanted to use a different slope, right? Yeah. Well, what did we represent our 2 is with the slope? What did we represent it with? What? Yeah. 1 over 1 or 2 over 1? Yeah, we said 2 is equivalent to 2 over 1, right? Mm -hmm. 2 is the same thing as 2 divided by 1. Right. So what we decided to do was rather than use 2 as our slope, we represented our equation with 2 over 1x minus 1. So what we did is we replaced 2 with the number 2 over 1. The value is still the same, correct? But we replaced it because this is easy to graph. Because when graphing slope, remember it was rise over run. So if you didn't have a fraction, it's kind of difficult to know what to, how to graph slope, correct? All right. So hopefully you guys understand when you have an equation, remember one side of an equation is equal to the other side of the equation. So if you have one thing equal to another, you can represent the other side um, equally for each other. They can, these are equal to each other. So you can represent either side of the equation. So in other words, if it has an x by it has a 1 underneath it. Yeah, you could always say that as well, too. I mean, that's, that's the yep. way of saying it. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to do substitution, but we're going to do a little bit different. So if you guys remember last class period, I told you guys to write down on that top box, the first thing you want to do when solving substitution is choose a variable to solve for that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. I'll say that again. Choose a variable to solve for that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. And I'll explain why we want to choose the variable that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. So I look at here, and I have two equations. Out of these two equations, I have 3x plus 2y equals 10. My x here has a coefficient of 3. This co here, I have a coefficient of 2. Then I have 2x minus y equals 9. Here, my coefficient of x is 2. And here, my coefficient of y is negative 1. So when looking at this, the only variable that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1, Yesenia, is y. y. So the y is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this equation, and I'm going to choose to solve for this variable because it has the coefficient of negative 1. So why do I choose that variable? Why am I telling you to do that? Yes? Uh, could you do it? Say if it was, say x was the coefficient of 1, could you solve for x? You mean 1 had a coefficient for x? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You're just, choosing y it You're just choosing y because you always want to choose the variable to solve for, which everyone has a 1 or a negative 1. And the reason being is because that's going to be the simplest way usually to solve these problems. So now what we need to do, Trevor, is we need to remember how do we solve for y. Well, we need to get y by itself. So the best way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to add y to the other side. So therefore, I get 2x equals 9 plus y. The next step is I subtract the 9 on both sides. So now I have 2x minus 9 equals y. And I'm just going to... What? Okay, I thought you were asking a question. So you guys can see now my equation is y equals 2x minus 9. But right? Yes. You could do that as well. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with doing that. If you wanted to undo what's happening to the y, subtract the 2x. So you get negative y equals negative 2x plus 9, divide by negative 1. It's the same. y equals 2x minus 9. See, I get the diff same answer. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, but you want to solve for it. Now, here's the reason. Why didn't you solve for this y? Why, why do you want to solve with the 1 or the negative 1? Well, let's try to solve for this y and see what would happen. 
If I had 3x plus 2y equals 10, if I wanted to solve for this one, take a look. I would subtract the 3x. Therefore, I'd have 2y equals 10 minus 3x. And then you've got to divide by 2. So you guys can see there's kind of like extra steps. And then what you're going to happen is you're going to end up a lot of times with fractions that we don't want to deal with. So you could do it this way. You can solve for any variable you want to. But you guys can see, you guys see how this equation is much more kind of mathematically diff, um, difficult. difficult than this one. This one has fractions. A lot of times you guys get mixed up with fractions, right? So why deal with one problem like this? Yes? No, no, you can't, well, you can't subtract them because they're not like terms. That's why we can't subtract those. All right, so you guys understand how the first step is to go right there. Yeah. The next step in that next box up top, what I'd like you guys to do. Is a second? Yep. So you guys have that second box. The next thing I want you guys to do is to replace your variable with its expression. So let's again remember what this says. This says the value of y, which we do not know, is equal to the value of 2x minus 9. They're equal in value. So can we replace one for the other? So yes. Yep, so just like I said here, 2 is equal to 2 over 1. It doesn't matter which one you use, right? It doesn't matter yeah. which one you use. The same thing, y is equal to 2x minus 9. So it doesn't matter which one I represent. So what we're going to do is we're going to now use the value of y to plug it into our other equation. So therefore, I'm going to take my other equation. And rather than saying 2 times y, Rather than saying 2 times y, I can now say 2 times 2x minus 9. Now again, why can I do that? Because 2x minus 9 is equal to y. And then you distribute right. the property, right? Yep. So all you guys got to do for the next one, and then what it says, yes. Yes, that's pretty much what you're doing, is taking one equation once it's solved and plugging in for that value into the other equation. So you're, what you're going to write on top is plug in your expression for your variable in, for the value um, into the other equation. All right. Then, ladies and gentlemen, what you look at now is, go, if you guys remember back in Algebra 1, you guys can solve equations when you have one variable. right? We know how to do this. We just might need a little more practice. But you guys can remember, we have only one variable. So what we're going to do now is apply the distributive property. So therefore, I have 3x plus 4x minus 18 equals 10. And then you combine like terms since they're on the same side. So now I can combine like terms. So I'm going to get 7x minus 18 equals 10. Add 18, and I get 7x equals 28. Divide by 7. So that means, ladies and gentlemen, if you were to think about this graphically, right? If you're going to think about this graphically, where these two lines intersect, the value of the intersection point is x equals 4. OK, so remember, because remember the intersection point was a coordinate point. It had an x and a y value. The x value is equal to 4. Exactly. So oh. do you put the uh, other equation for a 2x minus y, are you going to do the same thing? Once we solve this equation for a variable, we plug it into the other one. Now, we are going to go back to this equation because now I know the value of x is equal to 4. So now we'll do like 2 times 4 minus 2x minus, or minus 2 times 4 minus 9. Say that again. So then we'll go back and do 2 times 4 minus 2 times 4 well, we don't, need to plug, we don't need to plug this in back in, but what we can do is we know that the value of, of x is equal to 4, right? But remember, the intersection point was x and oh, y. So we need to find the value of y. So what I'm going to do is I can plug x into either one of these equations. But if you guys remember, I, yeah, I did work. I manipulated this equation, so it's already solved for y. So on the third box, on the top of the third box, what you're going to want to do is, is take the value. So once you've solved for your equation, once you solve for your va variable, 
take the value of one variable and plug it into your plug it into one of the equations to find the value of the other plug variable. Into where it says y equals. Yes, I plug it into this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to write y equals 2 times 4 minus 9. And then you get this going to the third box? Yep, this is in the third box. So again, why am I writing 4 in for x? Because remember, 4 is equal to x. These are interchangeable to each other. Right? Instead of writing x, you can write 4. So I go back to my equation, and instead of putting an x there, I can put a 4. So now 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 1 is negative 1. So therefore, my y coordinate is equal to negative 1. So now when I write my solution, our solution is x equals 4, y equals negative 1. Anybody have any general questions on that? Any questions on this, what I just did? No? OK. So now.